Welcome to Conversations. I'm Barbara Canalopoulos. The Woods Hole Film Festival is in full swing, and I'm thrilled to have the two stars with us now uh, of one of the films being shown, Gail Kirschenbaum and her mother Mildred, the stars of Look at Us Now, Mother. Welcome to the studio, and welcome to Cape Cod, Thank Thank you. Gail Thank and you. Mildred. Thank you. Now, last night was quite a performance. It seems to me that the, you had a full house. Were you pleased with uh, the audience reaction? Very pleased. Yeah. Did you notice that you received a standing ovation? I, yes, <laughs> I did. I did, and that doesn't happen too often. That's wonderful. The film is really, um, uh, some people in the audience uh, talked about how they related to um, their own Jewish mothers. But the film is not really just about an ethnic family. Uh, you had commented on the universality of the topic, and I would quite agree with you. Yeah, I wanted to, um, uh, because there was one, obviously we are a, a Jewish mother-daughter, uh, and the, it's about our family, and there was one woman, if you remember, who raised her hand and immediately said, oh my God, this is my story, I'm Jewish. And, and then that's when I turned to the audience, I said, you know, who's not Jewish, and most people were not, and I said, right who relates to it, and they all kind of acknowledge they related to it. So it's universal. It I is mean, it's universal. about people. Right. I recall uh, going to the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding and having people come to me, my background is Greek, saying, that was my family, that was my father, and I'm Polish or I'm uh, Irish. Mm -hmm. So it is universal. The uh, mother-daughter dynamic is, is being written about and talked about and I think uh, a lot of uh, young women are very much interested in exploring their own relationship with their mother. I think this is something you would encourage. Yeah, I mean, this became, this is my new life mission. Um, I don't know if you recall, but I had mentioned last night that the reason I even made this film is I had made a funny little short film called My Nose. Yes about my mother's relentless campaign to get me to have a nose job. And that little movie played all over the world and it was then, and it won awards, it was then that I saw people waiting in line and they were eager to tell me their story. And then I started coaching people because it was a story about a trauma in their childhood, mm -hmm. a mean parent, a critical parent mm -hmm. that could be long deceased that they haven't resolved this, that relationship, they still hold on to the anger and resentment. And then I started coaching people and teaching people how to forgive, even if the person's long gone. And it was due to the reaction. That was kind of the market research, you know. It wasn't yes, that I was yes. planning to do this yes. film. It was like I saw this need. I saw so many people hurting, and I went, oh, my God. It doesn't matter how successful you are professionally or how many children or grandchildren or spouses or lovers you have. If you haven't forgiven someone who mm -hmm. hurt you, in your childhood and you've suffered from it and you've carried that on in your adult life, it affects everything you do. It affects your relationships, affects everything. Yes, I, I quite agree. I quite agree. And I think that uh, something that you said uh, in the course of the movie, well, before we talk more about the movie, let's let our viewers see, get a, a sense of what the, the um, film is about. So there'll be, we're going to run a, a short trailer uh, right now. This is mom. This is me and mom. Okay, okay. Talk to you when you get home? Yes. This is the story of the transformation of our relationship from mommy dearest to my dear mom, from wishing her dead to being close friends. Did you ever see the Buffalo Nichols? She has, yes. has commented. Yeah. She said that I look like the Indian yeah. on the Buffalo Nickel. So overall, an extraordinarily supportive mother, uh, one who's given you a tremendous amount of confidence, self-esteem, yes. you very comfortable and yes. confident with yourself. This is the kind of portrayal that mom has given you all these years. And, and, uh, and in spite of that, clearly you've become an extraordinarily ex um, exceptional and accomplished individual. Well, they say obstacles build character. Yeah. You're fading. I'm fading. I never realized what an accent she had until she was on the Today Show. Your eyes are all washed out looking. My mother's comment was, Gail, 
You sound too Jewish. What is it that you want me to do to my eyes? Well, I think if you put a permanent liner on there. Put your hair back. Oh my God, look at you. And if I didn't love you, I wouldn't say anything. So she loves now, how do you get so through? much? She loved me so much that in my early years, I was convinced I was adopted. Do you think that you were a loving, devoted mother to me in my youth? It seems like you're always angry at me, that all your anger came out to me. Why do you think you never got married? Good question. Perhaps I have trust issues? I lived in fear of my mother's punishment and had constant headaches and dizzy spells. From head to toe, there wasn't anything right about me and the only solution for my mother was to remake me. Mom was a glamorous woman, and I was her only daughter. She had to dress up like a doll. She insisted on putting me in organdy dresses, which made me break out in rashes. But to Mom, looking good was more important than feeling good. I was a slow developer, and around adolescence, I began to grow one bump instead of two. I remember when I was 12, my mother kept saying that if my nose didn't stop growing, I would need a nose job. So I did begin to wonder what was growing out of the middle of my face. Look how cute you are now. That... The little nose that didn't start to grow okay. yet. I want to see if we can find where my nose began to take off. You can. I went through every one of these photographs, and there's nothing in here that will indicate, because there are no profiles. And your photographs... Um, full face are all the same. All the men that I let slip through my hands. Bob, yeah. he's worth a fortune. Stephen, they're all married. And look where I am today. Alone, single, making a movie about my nose with my mother. Little did I realize that when I started that this movie would grow bigger than my nose. Our life took a dramatic turn when my father suddenly passed away. <laughs> My mother had never been alone before. Thank you for being my dad. The death of my father was the birth of my relationship with my mother. I was invited to Europe with a movie of mine, and my mother said, I'll join you. For the first time in our lives, we were going to travel together alone. We are bootlegging the booze. We're not paying for it. We're landing at Berlin. It's the beginning of our adventure. We were about to find out if Europe was big enough to hold us both. This is turning out to be a pleasant holiday. Gail and I are getting along very well. I expected to get along well with her. I don't know whether she expected to get along well with me. But we will find out. I will now turn the mic over to Gail. Thank you, Mother. As I searched for answers as to why she had been so abusive to me, I began to uncover dark secrets from my mother's childhood, an untimely death, suicide attempts, and financial hardships. I remember anything wonderful as a child. I remember my mother never had money. I don't remember having a lot of toys or anything. I could feel my mother's pain having suffered so much myself. This was the first of many trips to follow. This personal film delves deeply into the mother-daughter relationship. It travels across continents and over time and hits many bumps in the road. And to think it all began with this bump. Oh baby, who are you? Oh baby, who are you? So to come back to uh, the film, something that you said caught, caught my attention last night uh, about the culture when, when you were uh, a parent and your children were young. That was a time when I think in our culture, whatever the ethnic group, we didn't, we didn't talk much. We didn't, we didn't expose our feelings. We, there was a kind of, uh, we, we kept things silent, sort of family Even when secrets. when a person was sick. Yes. No one talked about it. Someone had cancer. It wasn't public information. Right. Everything was kept secret. But with the film here, uh, Gail's view, do you know how many parents are? I'm talking about myself. You do the best you know to raise your child. When you say no, 
the child objects. But the parents could be right. You know, that's, that's true. And then they harbor it. And I was glad to put myself on the chopping block for Gail right, right. to do this movie because I felt there was so many. I live in a, in a community. I live in Florida. I kid around. I call it God's waiting room. <laughs> uh, how many parents do not talk to their children? And why? They harbor, they harbor the, their, their grief over this. Right. Their hateness. I would never talk yes. to them. Right. For no reason. And so often, as you said, when the parent is gone, people will say, well, I wish I had talked that over with my mother. I wish she had explained. Or sometimes we even have, I have friends who say, I didn't know that about my mother. Mm -hmm. And so if your film encourages mothers and daughters, fathers and sons to talk together, I think that's just really very important. I, I received an email um, from a woman who, after a previous screening, and she said she had been estranged from her mother, and after seeing my film, she called her. So it's sort of like if I can help one person, you know, that's my mission. But obviously, we want to help many, many people. Yes. Now, uh, how, how about uh, this movement? Uh, how, what are the mechanics of it? So we're building a global outreach movement focused on forgiveness and healing between mothers and daughters. And How about fathers and sons? No, we're focused on mothers and daughters because our story is a mother-daughter story. Mm -hmm. But other people can come on board and whatnot, but we're going to target mothers and daughters. So we're going to be launching something called Mama Dramas very soon where oh. people can videotape their own mama's oh. story. We're going to build community because you know what? People want to be heard. People want to share their story. So you'll be able to videotape your, we're going to have a channel devoted to that and we're going to build a community. Um, so we're getting that started and we're bringing in thought leaders to run it with us because we've never built a movement before. But there's a huge, and we're work partnering with all kinds of organizations from mental health organizations to women's groups to get out and do all this outreach and create new content. So the film is the centerpiece of this mm -hmm. movement mm -hmm. that is definitely global. So we're just launching it. And can I mention that we're also launching in September, right after the summer, a Kickstarter campaign, which is a crowdsource funding campaign uh -huh. that we are going to be launching to raise the funds to release the film theatrically and our, our outreach campaign. Now, uh, viewers can get this information from your website. Yes. So which the, would be very important. And, and we have a newsletter. So the oh best good. thing is that they go to look at us now, mother .com, right. okay. and up on the right hand corner is sign up for the newsletter and sign up there. And yes, we are in the midst of raising our funds, mm -hmm. which people could donate now and then we're gonna start the clock in September mm -hmm. and give it a thirty day out for our campaign to raise the, the funds that we need to do this. Yes, I think this is um, um, a, a humane effort and something very needed. When you consider the, the things that are being uh, uh, written about, there are so many essays. There is uh, Deborah Tannen who writes. Who I just got yes. an email from today. Deborah, really? Yeah, Deborah wrote, You Wore That. She's yeah. written a couple of books. Deborah, actually when I launched, when I decided to make this movie, the summer of 2011, I stopped producing TV. I'm actually a TV producer. And I ran a Kickstarter campaign, and Deborah donated some of her books as gifts oh, that we gave yeah. away. Wonderful. And I just emailed her to say, mm -hmm. Deborah, we're done. This is where we're at. So, well, interestingly, she has an essay in um, The American Prospect this on, on, um, on her mother who never liked her hair. When I brought in the article to show to our, one of our producers here, uh, a woman uh, who was standing by said, oh, hair, my mother hated my hair. So again, <laughs> when you talk about the universality of this, it yeah. is just so true. I know, I know Gail doesn't want to bring in uh, fathers and sons, but I have to tell you something that I'm friendly with a couple. He's a retired attorney, very intelligent, and when I mentioned 
this movie, he said, I hated my father. Gosh. See. He said, I would never talk to him. Well, this I is, didn't even want to go to his funeral. This is um, when I do my seminars, because I, te I develop something called the seven healing tools, and I teach mm -hmm. people how to forgive and how to transform difficult relationships. And I do them from all kinds of, uh, of audiences and, and right. participants to entrepreneurs, because what blocks you from accomplishing anything great is the negative voice in your head that says you're not smart enough, you're not good enough. Yes. And I teach people how to render that voice powerless and free yourself so that you can do what you want to do in life. But so, yes, this, this is for everybody. I mean, it's not just, but for our own sort of niche marketing, mm -hmm. we're focus, focusing yeah. on women and, and, and mothers and daughters, but it's, I have men relate to the story, you know, purple people, green people, sure. you name it, sure. it's universal. Yeah. The principle then gets applied to one's own life. Yes. So that seems to me, um, I think that there's a great thirst for that, for, for people to feel as if they are um, not part of a dysfunctional family, but part of a, a family. And families, you know, are, are, are different. Are the, uh, it's very stressful because we have a group of people uh, all of them different. I think so you pointed Barbara, this out. I have to say something. You know, uh, I have been very fortunate that I have been going with Gail to different festivals, and I have sat through many movies in the festivals. But I am astounded at Sarasota, at somewhere else, and here where she receives a standing ovation, and not other movies. Mm -hmm. And that's because everyone is relating yes, to yes, it. Yes, def it's definitely. It's hitting home. It, cer it certainly is. And so you, um, uh, the Woods Hole Festival ends, I think, on Saturday, next Saturday. And where do you go from here? So next week we're in Rhode Island, we're in Providence. It's playing at the Rhode Island International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. So next Thursday, August 6th at 4.30, it's, um, I think that it's at an a auditorium on Brown University, mm -hmm. but everything's on our website. Look at Good. us now, Mother. Good. Because then we have many, many, many festivals mm -hmm. thereafter, then Woodstock, New York, okay. many, many. And Tell them about Zachary. Sold well, out, 500 people. Well, this is in the past. I, mean, I, I, my, I came back from Israel recently. It was in Israel. It was in Canada. So we premiered in three countries within a month. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Right, right. Yeah. Now you're, um, so you have been uh, doing, doc your, uh, doing docu documentary, documentaries for a, for a long time. So I began my TV career. It's a second or third career. I began it in my early 30s. I, went into, I, I left New York. I was in advertising, making commercials, and then I was doing For which she received many awards. <laughs> and then I ended up uh, going to L.A. because I wanted to tell stories that would help people. So I ended up in TV, and I ended up at the PBS station, which mm -hmm. was the first job I got. But I actually never studied film. Oh. I went to art school. I, I kind of learned on the job. I wanted to tell stories and uh, yeah, I just learned on the job. Yes, well your, your uh, artwork is featured in, uh. the, in the film and, and I, I thought that was lovely, very interesting, the ones that you did as a child. So you see um, uh, a loving mother also treasures the, the uh, things that children are able to do and later, you, uh, some of those paintings were really quite, quite remarkable, very beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't done art in a long time. Yeah. I think about, you know, I should just go back. I don't have to raise money for that. <laughs> That's yeah. simple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's something you, you, you would always do, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I have a... She was involved in, the, um, what is it, the stories of um, America's Most Wanted or something? No, and, I've been a TV producer of many TV shows. So yeah. that was and one of the, the victim's parents just related to her. And one years later called her to tell her they found the killer. Really? Yeah. yeah. She's had so. incidents like right, that. Right. She relates to people very easily. And uh, thinking, too, about... Um, 
television, when, when we spoke earlier about the, the changing culture that has changed parenting styles, I think quite a lot about, um, about the media. Uh, we had said earlier that uh, par parents and families were somewhat secretive. There seems to be, um, uh, in, well, perhaps because of Oprah Winfrey's show, a sense that one's willing to let it all hang out, where, whereas earlier there was a sense of privacy. I think people are not afraid to appear to be vulnerable, as was the case when our children were young. Do you agree with that? Oh, definitely. I think I'm a baby boomer. In my generation, it, well, we want answers. We want to know, like, what ah. happened, what, what went wrong, or fill us in. So we, we're digging into the past. But I, we're going to also be launching a podcast series um, where I'm in conversation with other people who have their own stories or written their books or whatever. And when we were pre-interviewing a lot of people, some who are household names, we noticed something very common that a lot of these people, and we're focused on women, we've interviewed men too, have not forgiven their parent. Mm -hmm. And again, because they say their parent never said they were sorry, they never acknowledged they didn't, did anything wrong, and they still harbor that resentment. So my mission in this life is to teach people how to forgive, because you're trying to ask someone to acknowledge that they made a mistake mm -hmm. or say they were wrong, and they're clueless. It's like asking Stevie Wonder to drive a race car. They are so unaware. So you have to forgive. You have to get to the place. And I teach people how you do it. And you reframe how you look at that person. And it's usually a parent. And once you change how you look at that person, you can not be reactive to their criticism or abuse. Um, because I always say, if you have a little child and your little child goes, Mommy, I don't love you anymore, well, you know they need love. You're going to bend down and pick them up and give them a hug. Right. So if your mother says you're fat, you're ugly, you're stupid, they're a little child. They need a hug. Yes. Change right. how you look at the right. person. I thought it was interesting at the um, film last night, someone in the audience said, uh, I can't forgive. And you said, you do it, I can't forgive him. I think you said, you do it for yourself. Yes. It's only for yourself. You don't, yeah. you know, there's two things that you need in life, I say. You need the ability to forgive, because if you don't have the ability to forgive, you're see that you're, you have resentment and anger in you. And so that's going to carry on not just, it usually starts from childhood trauma, uh, a parent or somebody very close to you as you're growing up. If you can't forgive them, then you are walking around with this anger and resentment, mm -hmm. and that affects all your relationships, mm -hmm. because no matter what in life, we're going to come across difficult people. We're going to be difficult. You can have a toxic client, a toxic boss. We're going to run across these people. And if you haven't developed skills mm -hmm. on how to transform that relationship and change how you look at them, because when you change how you look at someone and how you behave towards them, they will change back to you. So you're just going to keep having fights and anger because you're going to get triggered by somebody and it's just going to grow and grow every relationship. So you need, so there's the ability to forgive for your own happiness and to free yourself and you need courage. So to accomplish anything great in life, you need to take the risk and you need the courage. So that uh, look at us now mother has a very happy ending. Mm -hmm. And um, although it's a very serious and important message, mm -hmm. the film also is enjoyable. Uh, your <laughs> sense of humor comes through quite clearly. And, uh, there was lots of Thank laughter you. last night. So you have uh, a film that's very important, an um, important message, but enjoyable and fun to watch. Well, I want to thank you so thank much you. for being with us. Thank you for inviting and, us. Yes, yes it was, it's my pleasure. And um, we'll uh, hope that viewers will take uh, the time to check your website and to continue with this very important movement that you've started. Thank you so much for viewing, and we look forward to seeing you all next time on Conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.